How's it going, people? Well, this is evidence for creation. So they're going to provide us with evidence for creation. And that's great, you know, because I got the perfect setting for it. <sighs> All right. Oh, wait. I still got some leftovers here. Some Redneck Riviera small batch. Mm. Mighty fine. American made, damn it. Okay, we live in a fascinating world of awesome beauty and amazing order. So they start off with the definitions and tell us, here's the parameters that you can play my game in. Okay. Order, huh? Well, there's ecosystems. I guess you could say that's sort of orderly unless they go out of balance or something. Yeah, fascinating and awesome beauty, but there's also Lyme disease and birth defects and mildew and toxic mold and lots of ugly bad things. But there's some beautiful things too. I, I look forward to those. All right, past the first sentence now. Dazzling sunsets, cascading waterfalls, revolving planets, <laughs> glittering stars. Do they really glitter? Or is it just from our point of view? And other wonders have captured man's attention and triggered much curiosity and all kinds of bullshit stories. That's where fables came from, and religion. <laughs> How did it happen? What, the fables or everything else that made people wonder? I think I, I'm going to have to say it's... How did the world happen? How did nature happen? Okay. Either all things have developed by natural, observable processes operating in the world presently, or they have been created by an infinitely powerful and all-wise God. Or maybe a genie in a bottle somewhere. You know, maybe I'm floating around in a ring of Saturn somewhere. And, yeah, cre created by God, and since you think there's only one and it's yours, not so tough, then. Yeah. There are ultimately no other alternatives. Okay, natural observable process. See, that's that tricky thing there. <laughs> Did you see it? <laughs> hey, that tree fell in the woods, but there was no one to hear it. It was silenced. <sighs> observable. Look, the process that be, <laughs> nature, it, it can't care. <laughs> it, that's not its job to care about what we think of it. <laughs> or if we think we have all the answers. No, what is, is. That's it. All right. But yeah, there's only two choices there. Isn't it funny? We always only get two choices. All right, let us examine one of the most important questions of our day. Does strong evidence exist for creation or for evolution? <laughs> oh boy, we're going to crack that old chestnut, aren't we? Oh boy. If so, what is that evidence? Prove it to us, or we're going to run back to our security blanket <laughs> and pull the covers down over our heads. The 
universe gives powerful evidence for creation. Okay, wow, does it really? It's here. The universe in which we live is a vast, orderly, majestic array of stars, planets, nebulae, and galaxies of unbelievable immensity. Okay, order, huh? You know, we... I don't know about order so much, but we imagine order. It's how we imagine patterns, you know, to get constellations. And here, the shapes we imagine in the clouds. They're not intelligently designed clouds, are they? Maybe they are. Sending us messages, who knows. Is it really order we're talking about or the patterns we perceive? This earth, as well as the whole universe, is not in chaos. It operates in orderly patterns and is controlled and directed by laws, as far as we know. <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. But who made those laws? Some bearded sky daddy <laughs> from the primitive past. The fact of law requires a lawgiver. Are they laws or patterns we observe? We know that every building must have a builder. Therefore, we know that the universe, the greatest building of all, had to have an omnipotent builder. Wow, checkmate, that easy, huh? It's really cool when you're the rule maker of the game that you play. <laughs> and you can move the goalpost to wherever it suits you. For every house is builded by some man, but he that built all things is God. Hebrews 3, 4. The worlds are framed by the word, word of God. They were framed. You know, framed sounds stationary somehow, doesn't it? You know, framed. Like on those pillars they talk about that the earth sits on in Psalms and stuff. Oh, the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament sheweth his handiwork. Psalms 19, 1. The marvelous world of living things gives power, uh, powerful evidence for, for creation. I think I started this video too late. Another one of those beautiful things is happening. Mosquitoes are starting to buzz. Part of the plan, part of the beautiful design. There's things that need to suck your blood and give you diseases and cause birth defects. Some mythical lady ate an apple or something. Something forbidden and fruity. I'm thinking it was a fig, actually, because why go to a fig tree to get leaves? <laughs> it's like, oh, eating the fruit of the forbidden tree is one thing, but putting it on our genitals next, that was... <laughs> We get shock put it out of heaven. <sighs> Scattered all over the world are countless numbers of remarkable creatures that are infinitely, infinitely complex. Infinitely? How about very? Extremely, maybe, but infinitely? <laughs> and extremely well organized. These creatures are highly specialized and perfectly adapted for their own particular environments. That makes a lot more sense than things that can live in one environment tend to live there and propagate. And if they come up with, you know, if something comes up with traits that work better, they, they live, breed more. Suddenly there's speciation, or was it kinds? Uh. 
all function well where they are and reveal no need or desire for evolution of any kind. Tell that to the platypus. Consider the amazing Bombardier Beetle. Okay, I will. This odd creature has a remarkable defense that enables it to escape from its enemies. Sounds designed, not. <laughs> With explosive force, it can inject a fluid from its twin combustion tubes in its abdomen that turn into a hot, poisonous smoke. Yeah, and uh, it, octopus and squid shoot out ink. You know, don't get me started on what skunks do. I mean, this is skunk territory. <laughs> oh, my damn leg's sinking into the soil. There we go. All right. Sinking again already. A pop can actually be heard as the gases shoot out. <laughs> Never mind, I'm not even going to go there. Okay. The bombardier beetle can repeat these explosions 15 or 20 t times in just a few minutes. Really? You timed it. That's awesome. He can swirl his twin cannons 360 degrees, and he never misses his target. Helps us survive, don't it? Consider also the woodpecker. I Woodpecker territory. <laughs> we got lots of bark beetles here, as you can see from the damage to that tree behind me. Perfectly designed got a, it's rotting from the inside out, but still trying to live. It's green on top. I'm rooting for it. Okay. A woodpecker who resembles a miniature jackhammer. Not really, but they act as if they were one. How's that? They don't look at all like a jackhammer. I've seen them. I've even used one a time or two. I don't recommend it. Not my favorite thing. How does he ram his bill into a tree over a thousand times a minute without breaking his beak or smashing his brains? How does he manage to reach inside the tree and pull out bugs for his lunch? Well, there's a book I recommend it to y'all. You can download it for free on LibriVox. It's called Origin of Species. He does a lot. Darwin really goes into birds a lot. Mostly finches, but yeah, the woodpecker intrigued him too. And if you really wanted to find out, you could find out. But I suspect some people really don't. And won't be watching this video, so I don't need to worry about them, do I? First of all, a woodpecker must have a special kind of bill. Again, original species. You know, you went from one island to another and the finches had different types of bills because the bill worked for their environment. They could eat certain foods better. But they were the same birds otherwise, just different bills. He went, what the fuck? Uh. It must be strong and sharp enough to dig into a tree without folding up like an accordion. Well, you know what? We wouldn't have woodpeckers if they didn't do their job well. Or at least could live with uh, their limitations, their adaptations. <sighs> he also needs to have a firm grip on the tree 
into which he is drilling. Well, he actually isn't drilling, he's pecking into it. You know, pick, 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 pick. Kind of like a JW on your door when you don't really have time for them. Otherwise, I'll amuse myself with them. <sighs> he has very stiff tail feathers, which he uses to brace himself against the tree. That's got to be mighty helpful. I could see how that adaptation might take hold, you know, in an environment that survives better with it. And specially designed feet with four claw-like toes. Boom, amazing. An arrangement that allows him to get a good tight grip. His head is equipped with shock absorbers. These shock absorbers cushion the blows so that the skull and brain of, brain of the woodpecker suffer no damage. Well, that's like the bighorn sheep ramming into each other's heads, you know, and, and some prehistoric species going way back to the dawn of time. That, yeah, yeah, if they make a habit of ramming their heads and they're not adapted for it, they're going to die and not reproduce. I think it's pretty obvious. All right. Another testimony of God's marvelous creation is the amazing defense system of lots of things. Uh, a little water beetle named Stinus by Punctitus. When his enemy, the Water Strider, pursues him, he squirts out a charge of liquid detergent from a pair of abdominal glands. As the detergent breaks the surface tension of the water, a small wave is produced that propels the beetle forward as much as above normal speed. And with that detergent, I get where you're going. Breaks down the grease, they not buoyant, right? Let's see. <sighs> the water strider, as he skids into the detergent treated area, immediately sinks because of the broken surface tension. To believe that such incredible complex functions and traits of these creatures result from genetic accidents. Oh my god, that one again. I've heard that one a lot from family members. Oh, oh this can't be an accident. <laughs> an accident, it still implies a creator or you know, somebody that, a subject that causes an action. Instead of a creation, it's an accident. But still, they're thinking there's got to be something in charge. <laughs> All right. Yeah. A result from genetic accidents and gradual evolution is unbelievable. I should have finished the sentence before I went off on my tangent. Sorry about that. As a punishment, I'll take another shot. The back legs of my chair are real skinny and they're sinking into this damn forest loam. Again! Mm, damn orderly, non chaotic crap. That's nature fucking with me again. What good are partly developed beaks on woodpeckers or partly developed combustion tubes on bombardier beetles? <sighs> Obviously, I don't feel that I need to come up with every answer here because I'm not a scientist. Talk to Thunderfoot, he'll straighten you out. If he's still around, I don't know. I don't get to do much YouTube these days. Although, I should be getting internet soon. Because I can't live without it. I, I tried. I tried. I'm, yeah. I should be getting internet soon. Such abnormalities are nowhere 
found either in the living creatures or in fossils. You know, I don't need to debunk that. If you're on YouTube, just type in the search engine. It's been explained ad, ad nauseum. If they wanted to understand, you could find out what the facts are and decide for yourself. Or you could just straw man the shit out of us, like you always do, religitards. In order for them to serve their intended purpose, they had to be created perfectly and suddenly, unless they are something that had a different purpose and readapted. I mean, we don't use our wisdom teeth, but we used to. Uh, we don't use our appendix, and I don't think. But we definitely, definitely used to. Uh, not anyone living now, but our species. Or I say we. No living thing in the world needs to evolve. Especially whoever wrote this. Oh. <laughs> Each is perfect, already perfectly adapted. By Presto Changeo. No, Presto Don't Changeo. Excuse me. Magic. The marvels of design and perfect adaptation in nature witness to the fact of creation. I don't know. I think they left some more arguments out because I was looking for far more than this. In an endless span of time, they could never have arisen by chance through accidental processes of evolution. Evolution is a accidents? No. I think species, they live on and on. The environment changes and some don't make it, and some do, and, you know, breeding is often a choice of who would be the best mate for me. Would they make children that could survive in this new environment? And tucking over great amounts of time, by our, our perceptions anyway, I think it makes sense. The existence of instinct in nature testifies for creation. Really? Instinct, huh? <sighs> okay. In a thousand ways, instinct is in evidence of nature. Right. Instinct is in evidence in nature. Instinct teaches a bee to build a perfect honeycomb teaches it. I'm not sure you understand bees. My dad was a beekeeper. Um, and the bird to build its own characteristic nest the first time it tries without previous experience. Well, that was downloaded into their little bird brains from God, right? <laughs> or magic or something. If you can't understand it, you know, you can always just say magic, right? Instinct inerringly guides the whale, the bird, and the monarch butterfly thousands of miles to their long and amazing migrations, unguided, where they have never been before. Yeah, there's some amazing shit. They should talk about ravens and crows, how they could recognize a person and have a problem with somebody who is a problem without having seen that one. Just because they, they seem to be able to talk to each other. Isn't that amazing? Magic. Upon reaching maturity, the eel migrates thousands of miles to reach spawning grounds in the Sargasso Sea. Near Bermuda, eels from as far away as Europe and Labrador make their way to these deep waters to spawn and die. 
It sounds like a perfect design, doesn't it? Unless you're an eel. <laughs> well, you, at least you get laid before you die. Eh, hardly worth it. All right. Uh, the baby eels that are born here make their way back across uncharted oceans to their very to the very same shore, river, or inlet in which their parents have lived. Just because you don't understand something doesn't mean magic. My chair signal again. God damn it. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. I'm digging holes in the forest here. Let's see. I think I'm lined up with the camera. Uh-oh. Sinking and sinking. This mystery, which has baffled scientists for years, gives power... Which years and which scientists? Just wondering. I mean, are we talking about recently? Just wondering. No footnotes here. <sighs> gives powerful evidence of intelligence far beyond what these animals themselves possess. Maybe you just underestimate their intelligence. The source of this intel source, huh? Capitalized. The source of this intelligence is the creator who fully equipped all forms of life and enabled such to survive in its in its own environment. Well, God, I mean, if you're a miracle God, I mean, an all-powerful creation, why not it make a better environment? Where all these mass extinctions aren't necessary, including possibly our own coming up. And necessary as in, Patterns. You can see where it's heading. And you, you can often at least try to guess based on those patterns. The Bible says, but ask me now the beasts, and they shall teach thee, and the fowl of the air, and they shall tell thee, or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee, and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee, Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? Job 12, 7 through 9, sinking into the ground. Yeah. Okay. Well, Job also tells us about the Leviathan and the behemoth that could drink a whole goddamn river. And Leviathan apparently breathes hot coals. All right. I need a sanity break. I'm not going to get all sciencey here cuz I don't do sciencey. I don't even do much of anything. <laughs> I just react to things in a real and often mostly unrehearsed, unprepared <laughs> sort of way. On. The fossil record gives powerful support for creation, according to you. The geographical record of fossils does not reveal a progression of development from the simple to the complex. Is that is that the where you move the goalpost now? Because <laughs> there's some things that got complex and became more simple. I mean, whatever helps them survive, right? And some things just stayed simple, like me. <laughs> In spite of all the efforts of trained observers, not one change of species into another. <laughs> oh, is on record. Oh, that's the that's the rule you've set now. They get to make the rules as 
to the game they play. And it is their game, so it's reality versus them. <laughs> and obviously, we don't know all of reality. We're trying to figure it out, but they want us to, like, throw it all out and go back with primitive bullshit. Just saying. I need another shot. Redneck Riviera. I kind of like it. Actually, I really like it. More than 250,000 different fossil species are in our museums today. Yeah, I recommend going to museums. That's a good place. I enjoy them. I could spend all day in one. I could spend days in one. If evolution took place, thousands upon thousands of these fossils should be intermediate or transitional forms. You know, that's that's the thing. You know, you talk about accidents and you talk about chance. Well, that's finding a fossil. Since most things that ever lived uh, disappeared without a fucking trace. Including some that are invertebrates. The author of this ought to know about that. I'm already sinking. Oh well. The things I do for YouTube. This is one. <laughs> Sorry, I accidentally read ahead. <laughs> oh, I should never do that. Oh. If apes evolved into man invertebrates into fish and reptiles into birds because it has to be specifically that way they they set the parameters of the argument so you can fail every time and they go default magic stamp it a whole series of intermediate fossils would show this to be true yeah, I've heard about the gaps in the fossil record. I've heard that said. That's some baloney. Oops. There is no fossil record, but the fossils we find seem to indicate that we could kind of reconstruct sort of a record of sorts from what we have found, which is I mean, you want to talk about fucking miracles. Find a fucking fossil. An important one. But, like I said, Richard Dawkins has covered it. Everybody's covered it. If they wanted to know, they would be able to see what we're talking about and then make a determination, but they don't want to know. They're just going to say there are no fossils that tell them what they demand them to tell them. And you know, this stuff has helped chase off the mosquitoes, I think. Because they were really bad for a little while. Some backyard I got, huh? Very nice. Okay, the fossil record. That tripped me up. All right. Marine creatures appear as marine creatures. Okay. Monkeys appear as monkeys. And people appear as people. What have you say? <laughs> For all these creatures to have evolved from supposedly lower life forms dur during millions of years of time without leaving a trace is not possible. It's entirely possible. But fortunately, we actually do have transitional fossils 
and they're in those museums that you speak of. Maybe not the ones you would go to, but yeah, they're there. <sighs> Google it, damn it. It's totally, you can look for yourself and go, all right, now I am unconditioned. I am unconvinced for honest reasons. Not because I'm afraid to find fuck something out. Okay, onward we go. Simpler. It doesn't work that way. It isn't like we go from simpler to more complex. But maybe our environments just get more complex. And then they change and change and you end up having some vestigial things that hang on, you know, uh, I don't know. I'm a scientist, and I shouldn't go there. All right. Supposedly lower life forms. All right. Supposedly. Yeah. By somebody. During millions of years while leaving for it's actually totally possible. Yeah. Chimpanzees and mankind remain distinct <laughs> and separate. We should live together like, why not? Because <sighs> they live in a different environment and they have different needs than us. If anything, it's the human beings that are moving in <laughs> and they're going away. You wait. And the fossil record continues to widen the gulf between man and apes, according to the author of this. Instead of the fossil record giving scientific evidence for evolution, it gives powerful evidence for a creator. <laughs> really? Okay, let's go with that. Who brought all things into existence at the beginning of time? In the beginning, God created is the best explanation for origins. A real knee slapper there. <laughs> the universe and the entire world. How about the world and the entire universe? You got everything backwards, bruh. <laughs> uh, and the entire world of living things have not come about by some random chance. No, they came about because they can. And if they couldn't, then they, they wouldn't have, because they couldn't. Wow, that was hard. <laughs> uh, damn skeeters. Ah, creation. Damn it, why'd you make mosquitoes, God? And we got wood ticks and Lyme disease around here. Uh, and poison oak. Thank you, God. If you made that shit, thank you. Oh. Did not. Uh, the universe and the entire world of living things have not come about by some random chance process of evolution or a big bang. Wow, they actually separated the two. Most religious-hearted apologists tend to lump them together. I haven't finished, have I? I will pick that up later, I promise. The fossil record also confirms the biblical account of a worldwide flood in Noah's day. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Noah. <laughs> They're Utnapishtim or one of those guys. There's, there's several Noahs, and it would make sense. I mean, just think how our DNA would be even less diverse than it already isn't. 
Chapters 6 through 9 of Genesis tell of this catastrophe by which God brought judgment upon the earth. He created. That was an honest statement. He made this. It was fucked up. And he went, shake the itch of sketch. But let's leave a few things I kind of like. Eh, maybe it'll give me better ideas later. A global flood explains the abundance of sedimentary rock on and beneath the surface of the earth. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. I know a tiny bit about geology, and that's enough. <laughs> I get the joke. <laughs> oh. oh, that's good. Oh, that's precious. <laughs> In this rock, geologists find the remains of literally billions of beautifully preserved creatures and plants. Wow. <sighs> All over the world, these specimens bear unmistakable testimony of an overwhelming flood of water that sealed their fate. Yeah, there were probably all kinds of floods. Probably will be some in the future. I mean, it is all about us, unfortunately. Reality and the universe, we're just a little part of that. Get over yourselves. <sighs> Those who are unwilling to believe the truth, I am totally willing to believe anything that's the truth. But I'll continue to question even that. Until I'm satisfied, which will probably be never. Because I don't do faith. Faith is kind of dumb. Sorry. I think it is. But they start with babies. And those babies have babies. And that's how the indoctrination gets past the logical software we all have for other things. Those who are unwilling to believe the truth, not me, I'm totally willing to believe something that's true, may spend a lifetime in research laboratories attempting to document their erroneous Persuasions. Erroneous persuasions. Never even heard that. Wow, that's crazy. Sounds like a bit of projection, don't it? A whole lot of projection, actually. Like total projection. <sighs> but to no avail. I'm not trying to twist anyone's arm to make them think different. I totally am a live and let live kind of guy, actually. I don't care if you believe in crazy shit. I really don't. I'm just expressing myself on my channel. It's, believe what you want to believe, and I'll laugh at you. Because I can. It's a miracle. Awesome. I hope it continues to stay that way. All right. Uh, the simple fact of creation cannot be altered or destroyed. Who would want to destroy something true? Unless they're totally invested in something not true. I would totally believe anything that's true. If I found out it was true. But I probably would put it to the test. Sorry. I'm a dick that way. And I do that with people, too. 
probably why I have a house and a cat and just that. The Bible says, <laughs> because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, either were thankful or damn ungrateful, I guess, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Is that what happened to me? Because I didn't mean for it to happen like that. I want to be on the good guy's side. I want to believe true shit. I care about what's true, and I discard the things that I thought were true that I found out later were probably not true. That's life. There is no fucking handbook. Sorry. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Romans 1, 21 and 22. That's beautiful. <laughs> These words accurately describe the conditions of man apart from a personal relationship with the Creator God. <laughs> hey, I would totally be down for that if it were true. I would. I would. I swear to whatever God, if any. They simply will not believe with Whatever the evidence, well, there's some idiots if that if that's how they are. I will believe with evidence, and nobody come up with anything persuasive, in my opinion. And I'm always looking and listening. I'm a great listener, believe it or not. <sighs> yeah. I mean, not on YouTube, but... Um, if you leave a comment, though, I read it. I will read it. I can't help myself. It's OCD. All right. We were created to bear God's image. So we're going to be invisible someday, huh? That's awesome. And incorporeal. And non-temporal, apparently. Hey, you know what? Star Trek predicted it too. So I'm original Star Trek. Ugh. But because of our sinful nature, we need his mercy and grace <laughs> to save us from our sins and make us holy. And that's without a W in front, by the way. Uh <laughs> Through faith in God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, we can become a new creation. <sighs> and thereby honor the our Maker. Does he require me to honor him? Really? That's the one thing that always tripped me up as a kid. All that animal sacrifice and, hey, Jesus died, so now we don't have to do that. Why do we ever have to do that if this is a real God and all those fake gods ask for the same shit? I don't know. <sighs> the Lord invites you to enjoy new life in him. You're no longer yourself. You are Borg. Star Trek The Next Generation, sorry. By accepting his gracious offer and resistance is futile of salvation today. But as many as received him to them Gave he power to become sons of God. But 
not every God, just the one that's real. And there's only one, it's yours. If you believe in one, I'll give you that. I'm nice that way. I, I, I'd rather get along. <sighs> Even to them that believe on his name, whatever that name might be. That's John 1, 12. And this was written by Melvin R. Weaver. And that's the Rod and Staff Publishers, Inc. And, I don't know, discuss. What do you think? Are you creationist now? If so, I, I want credit for that. <laughs> and if you're less a creationist, yeah, I'll take that too. I'll, I'll actually be happier with that. But, hey, whatever the fuck. Believe whatever you want. I really mean that. I don't fucking care. I really don't. Believe what you want. And, you know, daylight's burning anyway, so. Let me know if you learned anything. If you learned anything. If you had any insights I missed, share them, please, with me and my audience. I don't know. Not much. And I've been at it since, what, 07, I think? 08? <laughs> I don't care. Whatever. I don't worry about that shit. And I don't look at algorithms, and I have no Patreon. So, let me know if you know anything. And peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. Because I don't care what it is. I just want it to be wonderful. For you. Because I'm, I'm like that. If wishful thinking works, there you go. Bye.